Is the new Toyota Tacoma the best new light duty truck to buy? That's what we're going to find out. Welcome to Carl Corner, where we help you, the consumer, master the process of car buying and car ownership. For 2024, Toyota has completely redesigned the Tacoma, giving it an all new design and platform, lots of brand new technology, and even offering the option of a brand new hybrid. But are all these changes enough to make it a better choice over a comparable mid-sized truck like a Nissan Frontier or a Honda Ridgeline? And perhaps more importantly, with all this new technology, is this still the same super durable and reliable Tacoma that we've come to expect? In other words, is it still a proper Tacoma? Well, that's what we're going to find out. But before getting into it, remember, if you enjoy and get value out of this video, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications. Toyota has made a lot of significant changes to this all new Tacoma, starting with the platform, which shares the same global truck platform with other Toyota and Lexus models, including the Toyota Tundra, the Sequoia, the Lexus GX, and even the Land Cruiser. It's a super high strength box steel ladder frame, so this is a stronger, more rigid truck than the previous generation. But even though the structure is completely new, the new Tacoma hasn't really changed all that much in terms of overall dimensions. It's still the same overall length as the previous generation, which was very important for Toyota because they wanted to make sure that the Tacoma could fit inside of a normal garage, which is very important for a lot of Tacoma owners. Toyota did change the suspension though, which has a new coil spring rear suspension, which replaces the old leaf springs, which is designed to give the Tacoma better handling and a better ride. And these changes are very noticeable. This new Tacoma does ride and handle better than the previous generation, which was a little bit on the crude side by comparison. I spent a very brief time behind the wheel of the Frontier and the Ridgeline before doing this test drive, and I have to say that this does ride and handle just as well, if not better than the Frontier, although it's not quite on the same level of the Ridgeline, which of course has a crossover platform and has a much more comfortable ride and is still a lot more usable every day. The Tacoma, by comparison, is still a body-on-frame truck, so having a proper truck platform, it's still going to have that jiggly ride and truckish feel, but for what it is, it's still pretty good. Now, having better ride and better handling is all very good, but perhaps the more controversial change that Toyota made is with the drivetrains. Gone is the old four-cylinder and naturally aspirated V6 engine. Instead, the Tacoma now comes standard with a brand new iForce 2.4 liter four cylinder engine that's turbocharged and comes matched to an eight speed automatic transmission. This engine produces 278 horsepower and 317 pound feet of torque, which admittedly does make it feel more powerful than the old V6 engine. And of course, Toyota did know that it's a controversial move to replace a really well proven and reliable V6 with a more complicated turbo four cylinder. So what they've done to ensure reliability is to use more heavy duty commercial grade parts for this engine, as well as a more heavy duty cooling system so that this engine stays as cool and reliable as possible. And even though this is a relatively new engine and transmission, it does share the same basic components with a lot of other Toyota models. So it should hold up pretty well over time. I discussed the topic of reliability with Toyota's chief engineer of the Tacoma several months back at a Toyota event, and he was absolutely adamant that this new truck, despite being more complicated, would be just as reliable as the old Tacoma. Well, my response to that, only time will tell. The issue for me, aside from this being a more complicated engine, is that it's not really that much more efficient than the old V6. This engine is rated for around 18 to 24 miles per gallon, or around 10 to 13 liters per 100 kilometers, which is really not much different from the V6 engines that you get in both the Nissan Frontier and the Honda Ridgeline. And not only is the efficiency really no better, but because this is still a four cylinder, it does have a bit of that crude gravelly feel when you push it hard. It certainly doesn't have the same refinement and smoothness as a six cylinder. And that's perhaps one of the advantages that you still get with the Frontier, which has a proper large displacement 3.8 liter V6 engine that produces over 300 horsepower. And it's the same story with the Ridgeline, which has a naturally aspirated three and a half liter V6, another really well proven reliable engine that does have more smoothness to it. So even though it does have very good power and performance, and it does have a smooth shifting eight speed automatic, which is very nice. I'm not completely sold on this four cylinder turbo in other ways. 
to me, the much more intriguing engine option is the brand new optional iForce Max Hybrid. Now the iForce Max uses the exact same drivetrain as the regular Tacoma, only with an electric motor that comes sandwiched in between the engine and transmission, hybrid components that are underneath the hood, and a nickel metal hybrid battery that occupies the cavity underneath the rear seats. And the result of having that hybrid boost is a lot more power. The Hybrid Max produces 326 horsepower and 465 pound-feet of torque, which is a lot of power. And because the Hybrid has that electric assist, taking some of the load and strain off the engine, it should be a little bit more fuel efficient than the base engine. We don't have the official fuel economy numbers quite yet. They'll be revealed when the Hybrid Max goes on sale a few months after the normal engine, but the combination of having a lot more power, slightly better fuel economy, along with a hybrid option, is something that you can get from any other comparable truck. And that's really the huge advantage that you get with the Tacoma. And of course, Toyota is known for making the best and most reliable hybrids available on the market, so this should be a really attractive option. Now in terms of its capability, the Tacoma is able to tow up to 6,500 pounds and has a payload capacity of just over 1,700 pounds. Numbers that are fairly comparable with other similar mid-sized trucks. You also get a lot of great new features which are really great to see including trailer brake control and a tow haul mode along with a drive mode selector. And there's also an available wireless trailer camera which will help a lot for those who do a lot of towing. Toyota has also added some nice bed features including a dampened tailgate, an optional power tailgate, a bed camera so that you can view what's in your bed, and also a 400 watt AC inverter on the regular engine and a 2400 watt inverter on the hybrid. Both 5 foot and 6 foot bed options are available and in the US you have a choice between either a 2 seater extra cab or a 4 seater 4 door double cab which is the only option that you get in Canada at this time. Now even though this is a pre-production truck that I'm test driving which sometimes have some build quality issues I have to say the overall build quality and interior of this truck is quite nice. You have nicer finishes and a huge upgrade in the technology on every single grade. You get a choice between either a standard 8-inch touchscreen display or an available 14-inch touchscreen, which has the new Toyota multimedia interface with wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. There's also an available digital driver display behind the steering wheel, which has great looking graphics and some nice customizability to it. You also get plenty of user-friendly, straightforward controls for most of your basic functions and a decent amount of storage space. The seat comfort and the interior space in both the front and rear seats is pretty good, although this is still a mid-sized truck, so don't expect it to be as spacious as something like a Tundra. There's no question, the features and available technology is a huge upgrade over something like the Frontier, which is a pretty basic old school truck by comparison. But if you want to have the most amount of interior space, storage space, including storage space underneath the bed, the Honda Ridgeline is still ahead in those areas. So with all that said, I think it's time to get into the pricing and go over all the different grades and trim levels that are available on the Tacoma because there is quite a lot to go through. So the pricing for the Tacoma ranges from around 35,000 to 52,000 US or around 49,000 to 60,000 Canadian for the iForce engine. Pricing for the iForce Max Hybrid is not available at this time because as mentioned, it's not gonna go on sale for a few months later after the regular engine. Now because there are so many different grades and trim levels available for the new Tacoma, I had to pull over and stop so that I could safely look at my notes so that I don't miss any important information. So going through the different trim levels, the most popular entry level grade is going to be the SR5. This comes standard with the full output iForce turbo four cylinder engine with the eight speed automatic and does come very well equipped. In the US, however, you can get a more basic version of the Tacoma, which is called the SR. Now this is a commercial grade truck, which has a detuned engine, leaf spring rear suspension and steel wheels, but is perfectly fine for somebody who just wants a very basic workhorse truck for not a super high price. The US also gets a two door, two seater extra cab and a more off-road oriented pre-runner version, which again is not available in Canada. Now above the SR5, we have the TRD Sport, which is a more well-equipped, more sporty, street-oriented version of the Tacoma. And it does come with TRD Sport suspension. 
Now, if you're looking for something that's not necessarily street oriented, but more off-road oriented, you could instead go for the TRD off-road, which does come with a lot more off-road equipment. The off-road comes with Mono 2 Bilstein remote reservoir suspension, skid plates, 11.5 inches of ground clearance, a little bit more than the regular Tacoma. You have a rear locking differential, the multi-terrain select system, beefier tires, and an available sway bar disconnect. Both the TRD Sport and the TRD Off-Road also offer the option of a six-speed manual transmission, which has become a really rare option in the truck segment. You can also get the manual on some of the lower trims in the US. So again, if you want a very basic old school truck, especially with one that offers a manual, the Tacoma is really the go-to choice now. Another great option on the TRD Sport and TRD Off-Road is the iForce Max hybrid drivetrain which is optional only on the TRD off-road in Canada. The iForce Max Hybrid though does come standard on two of the higher trims, including the TRD Pro. The TRD Pro is for those who want an even more hardcore off-road oriented version of the Tacoma. You get two and a half inch Fox, QS3 three-way adjustable internal bypass shocks, forge control arms, a front frame cross member for strength damage resistance, and beefier tires. Overall, a much more hardcore off-road package. And then on the flip side, for a little bit different flavor, you also have the new Trail Hunter. This one comes with ARB Old Man Emu suspension, an ARB steel bumper, a sport bar, rock rails, even a snorkel, and again, beefy 33-inch tires. The differences between them supposedly is that the TRD Pro is designed to be more of a high-speed off-road truck, whereas the Trail Hunter is designed to be more of a lower speed raw crawler. I'm not sure whether that's a huge distinction, but it is pretty cool that Toyota is offering so many different configurations for the new Tacoma. And the last trim that's available is the top of the line limited, which is designed to be the more luxury oriented version of the Tacoma with a lot more features and comforts, an adaptive variable suspension. You have a full time four wheel drive system instead of part-time four-wheel drive like you get on the other Tacomas, standard iForce Max hybrid in Canada, and optional hybrid in the US. So there you have it, lots of different options to choose from, and admittedly, it is a little bit confusing given how much variety there is, but there is a little bit of something for everyone depending on what you're interested in and ultimately what your budget is. But if I had to pick one variant for being the absolute sweet spot in the entire lineup, I think that would be the TRD off-road. It offers the most options, a lot of great off-road equipment. You can get it with either a six-speed manual or the eight-speed automatic, the regular engine or the hybrid engine. And in terms of pricing, it's pretty reasonable as well. And compared to the other mid-sized trucks, well, I think that because the Tacoma has added so much new technology and has moved up a little bit, it's now made the Nissan Frontier the more super basic old school truck for somebody who just wants to have something that's a basic no-nonsense workhorse. And then on the flip side, if you want a more comfort-oriented everyday truck, something that's not necessarily going to be used for off-roading, something that you can just use on a regular basis, and it's not necessarily the best when it comes to towing and hauling, well, I think for that purpose, the Honda Ridgeline is still the better option. The Tacoma, on the other hand, is kind of playing a bit of both sides and with a huge spectrum of different models to choose from, which is definitely a really good thing. Now, the big question mark is how the iForce Max Hybrid is going to do, and I really think that might just be the gem in the Tacoma lineup, but we'll have to wait and see. In the meantime, let me know what you think of the brand new Tacoma. Would you take this truck over other comparable mid-sized trucks? Let me know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe. You can also check out my other videos by clicking these links over here. Make sure to follow me on Instagram. And if you need additional car buying advice, recommendations, or help with getting a great deal on your next new car purchase, make sure to visit carhelpcan.com. Thanks so much for watching and see you next time.